During the Napoleonic era, humanity reshaped borders through war while unknowingly redrawing the boundaries of the natural world. Across Europe, the clash of empires consumed landscapes while colonies expanded overseas, accelerating the silent erosion of biodiversity. Industrialization began to take root, bringing with it deforestation, pollution, and the relentless harvesting of nature's resources. In 1815, the eruption of Mount Tambora darkened the skies, leading to famine and ecological upheaval in 1816, a year when crops failed and species struggled unseen. Species vanished quietly without documentation or concern as science had not yet fully awakened to the scale of the loss. Insular animals edged closer to oblivion while island ecosystems from Mauritius to the Caribbean suffered irreparable wounds. Humanity charted new maps of conquest and commerce but left no records of the lives it erased along the way. In these decades of revolution and ambition, extinction moved forward unseen without witness. On the remote island of Rodriguez, the gentle domed Rodriguez giant tortoise once grazed peacefully in great herds, shaping the landscape with its slow, deliberate movements. Hunted relentlessly by settlers and sailors for food and oil, it vanished around 1800, a silent casualty of human exploitation and invasive species. Though small among its kin, its absence left a vast emptiness in the island's fragile ecosystem. Today, distant cousins from Madagascar walk in its stead, trying to rekindle the life these vanished tortoises once sustained. Towering above the grasses with its arched shell and elongated neck, the saddle-backed Rodriguez giant tortoise browsed the island's higher foliage, a gentle giant among ancient herds. Like its smaller relative, it was wiped out by relentless hunting, shiploads carried away to fuel the hunger and greed of passing sailors. Its absence left Rodriguez forests to wither without the quiet work of seed dispersal and clearing once done by these creatures. Today, Aldabra tortoises from the Seychelles roam in their place, keeping alive a fragment of the island's lost rhythm. Once common in the cool, clear streams around San Francisco Bay, the sooty crayfish vanished quietly beneath the waters it once called home. The arrival of invasive species like the aggressive signal crayfish sealed its fate, outcompeting it until not a single trace remained. Despite searches through its former habitats, no living specimen has been seen since the 19th century. Its story is a small but poignant reminder of how easily the delicate balance of freshwater life can be lost. Beneath the cold waters off Tasmania, the strange and secretive smooth hand fish once crept slowly across the seafloor, walking on its fins like limbs. Known only from a single specimen caught in 1802, it became the first marine fish declared extinct, until doubt cast that verdict into uncertainty. Centuries of dredging for oysters and scallops likely erased the fragile habitat it depended on. Now it lingers between existence and oblivion, a ghost species hidden in the silt of forgotten waters. Weinberg conebush was a flowering shrub native to the unique Feinbos ecosystems of South Africa's Western Cape, part of the richly diverse Protea family. Likely lost by 1806, it fell victim to the rapid spread of agriculture and the relentless transformation of its fragile habitat. Fires, grazing, and human settlement erased the landscapes where it once thrived. Today, it survives only as a name in old botanical texts, a silent casualty of vanished wildlands. The St. Paul Island duck, a small, flightless species of the Marika genus, once inhabited the remote and windswept St. Paul Island in the Indian Ocean. Poorly known and rarely described, it likely resembled a compact teal with stunted wings, perfectly adapted to its isolated, predator-free world. 
Its extinction in 1807 came swiftly with the arrival of humans and the invasive rats they brought, which preyed upon its eggs and young. The Kangaroo Island Emu, a small and flightless subspecies, once roamed the dense scrub of South Australia's Kangaroo Island. Smaller than its mainland cousins, it vanished by 1819, driven to extinction by hunting, habitat destruction, and the fires settlers brought with them. A few confused remnants, skins and bones, were shipped to France, where they still gather dust in museum collections. Today, its story is pieced together from scattered relics and uncertain sketches, a bird erased before it was ever fully understood. The King Island Emu was a strikingly smaller cousin of the mainland emu, standing just under a meter tall with a darker, almost smoky plumage that set it apart. Native to the coastal edges of King Island, these birds gathered in small flocks during breeding season but otherwise roamed mostly alone, feeding on berries, grasses, and seaweed. Despite their reduced size, they retained large, precocial chicks that were well adapted to the island's scarce resources and cooler climate. Sadly, their isolated home became a trap when sealers arrived in the early 1800 years, hunting them relentlessly with dogs trained to chase and kill. The bird vanished from the wild within a few years, with only a handful surviving briefly in captivity in France before the species disappeared forever. Their extinction, hastened by human activity and habitat disruption, marked the loss of a unique island dweller whose subtle adaptations reveal the delicate balance of insular life. The spotted green pigeon, likely extinct, was first described in 1783 from two unknown specimens and a drawing, and is closely related to the Nicobar pigeon. Only one specimen preserved at the World Museum Liverpool is known today, and the species was officially recognized as extinct in 2008. This pigeon was smaller and slimmer than the Nicobar pigeon, with dark green plumage featuring pale triangular spots on its wings and a longer tail. It was probably arboreal, feeding on soft fruits in dense forest canopies, and was a sedentary bird living on a remote island in the Pacific or Indian Ocean. Its extinction likely occurred due to overhunting and introduced predators, possibly disappearing around the 1823. The Madeira finch is remembered mostly through sparse historical records and a few preserved specimens that hint at its striking white-headed plumage contrasted with a dark body. The elegant features and delicate build of this bird hint at a species finely tuned to its environment, yet vulnerable to disturbances. Sadly, habitat destruction and the introduction of invasive predators by humans sealed its fate, leading to its extinction before scientists could fully understand its place in nature. The Maupity monarch was a bird species native exclusively to the island of Maupity in French Polynesia. It remained unknown to science until a single specimen was collected in 1823 by Jules de Blosseville, shortly before the species became extinct. Once considered the same species as the Tahiti monarch, it was only recognized as distinct in 2012 following taxonomic revisions. Its extinction, occurring soon after discovery, highlights the fragile existence of island endemics in the face of environmental changes and human impact. The mock starling was a small, dusky black bird with yellow eyes, known from a single specimen collected in 1825 on the island of Mock in the Cook Islands. Its exact origins and identity remained a mystery for many years, partly due to label confusion and misinterpretations of early drawings and descriptions. The species likely went extinct soon after European contact, primarily due to introduced rats that preyed on the bird and its eggs. Despite the enigma surrounding its history, recent research has clarified its provenance and confirmed it as a distinct, now lost member of the Pacific Island Starling Group. The Amaui was a large, brownish songbird endemic to the highland forests of Oahu, known for its fruit-eating habits and melodious song. It vanished around the early 19th century, as a result of habitat destruction, introduced mosquitoes carrying malaria, and predation by invasive rats. Little is known about its exact behavior or nesting, as it disappeared quickly and is known only from a lost specimen and subfossil remains. 
Its tragic extinction highlights the vulnerability of island species to human impacts and introduced diseases. The Mauritius blue pigeon was a strikingly colorful bird endemic to Mauritius, notable for its white hackles, indigo body plumage, and maroon tail, resembling the Dutch flag in color. This robust species lived mainly in the island's humid, mountainous forests, feeding primarily on fruits, nuts and possibly mollusks, and it likely moved seasonally to follow food availability. Despite coexisting with humans for over two centuries, the bird's population declined sharply due to habitat destruction, hunting, and introduced predators such as crab-eating macaques. The last confirmed sightings date to the early 19th century. The Mauritius blue pigeon's disappearance reflects the severe ecological damage inflicted on island ecosystems by human activity and invasive species. The Kosray crake was a small, blackish bird with distinctive white spots and reddish eyes, legs and feet, native to the coastal swamps of Kosray. Discovered in 1827, it may have been flightless, though its native name suggests it could fly short distances. Known only from two specimens, the bird was already rare by the late 1820 years and disappeared soon after due to introduced rats that invaded its habitat. Despite multiple surveys, it has not been seen since and is considered extinct. The Coast Ray Starling was a glossy black, crow-like bird with a long curved bill and tail, endemic to the montane forests of Coast Ray Island. Known from only five specimens collected in the late 1820 years, it was formally described by Kitlitz in 1833. Despite later expeditions in 1880 and 1931, no sightings were recorded, confirming its extinction. The species likely vanished due to the introduction of invasive rats that spread across Coast Ray. The Bonin Grosbeak was an extinct finch endemic to the Bonin Islands, known for its solitary or paired behavior and a diet of fruits and buds mostly gathered from the ground. It was a relatively basal member of its group, genetically distinct and without close relatives, having diverged around 12 million years ago. The bird was discovered in 1827 and was observed to be reluctant to fly, with a soft, high-pitched call. Its extinction likely followed the human settlement around 1820, which brought habitat destruction and introduced predators. Despite occasional unconfirmed reports of its survival on nearby islands, it is believed to have disappeared soon after settlement due to these pressures. The Bonin thrush was an extinct bird found also only on the Bonin Islands, known from just five specimens collected by Heinrich von Kittlitz in 1828. It lived mostly on the ground in coastal woods and was possibly a ground-nesting species. Despite being considered common by Kittlitz, later expeditions in the 1850 years failed to locate the thrush, likely due to habitat loss and introduced predators such as rats and feral mammals following human settlement. The Tonga ground skink, was a small, ground-dwelling reptile native to the islands of Tonga. Its appearance featured smooth, shiny scales and relatively small limbs, adapted for a life spent primarily on the forest floor. Little is known about its biology, but like other skinks, it likely fed on insects and small invertebrates. The species became extinct around 1829, primarily due to habitat destruction and the introduction of invasive predators. These combined pressures rapidly decimated the skink's populations, leading to its disappearance shortly after European contact. Its extinction reflects the broader pattern of vulnerable island species succumbing to human-driven environmental changes during this historical period.